How's it going, Justin? Good. Uh, with a guy like Juice who accomplished so much last year in his first year, what what is the offseason like for him, and how do you kind of keep pushing him to the next level? What is next for him? Um, you know, uh, my challenge to, to Juice has been, um, you know, the, we always talk about in our room is playing with something to prove and coaching with something to prove. So my whole challenge to him was, hey, man, were you a flash in the, plant, a flash in the pan one-year guy, or can you can you come back and do the same thing and, and do it better? Um, so that's been my, been my challenge to him. Uh, Juice is the kind of kid, though, you, he's pretty self-motivated. Um, you know, he, I, I think he remembers where he came from, and he's always got that edge. Um, he's trying to win. He's trying to compete. Um, so, uh, you know, he doesn't – he's not a guy that takes a lot of motivation every single day. So, uh, really proud of how he's working and how he's pushing himself to get better. And, um, I, you know, I think he, uh, his ultimate goal is to play at the next level. And I think he knows he's got to put really good stuff on tape for another year. And i um, really pleased with how he's doing. Justin, two for you, and um, I'll just uh, I'll be the one that asked the question since David's not here today. Uh, obviously, there were rumors over the last couple of weeks that schools had reached out to you. I know you're not new to that. Um, can you just address that if you could, and just you know, obviously, just deciding just to say it's South Carolina. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I really, I, if it's okay, I don't want to really get in get into all that. Um, I'm happy to be home. Um, it's always good to, you know, it's a it's a you know, it's a direct result of the players and uh, Coach Beamer and the program we're building. Um, but I'm happy here. I'm happy with Shane, or with Coach Beamer, and happy with you know, Coach Loggins. And I love my room, and I love my guys, and uh, I think we've got a really good thing going here. All right. Bringing it back here, appreciate you taking the time to answer that. With um, DeCarrie on Joyner hopping around, obviously you're no stranger to, to him moving around, this and that. How has he been handling everything? And, you know, not to put a pres percent on it, but how much is he working with the receivers? Yeah, you know, DK is, I think everybody in here knows, is DK is the ultimate Gamecock, man. He's he's Carolina through and through, um, and he just wants to do whatever he can to help the football team. So um, the great thing about it is he's played so much quarterback that we know how he knows how to do stuff like that, and he's played so much receiver, he's pretty comfortable with what we do uh, in my room. Um, and so he's been doing more running back than wide out. Um, but, I mean, this, obviously when you get into a lot of your empty stuff and stuff where the running back's out and has to run pass routes, it's really nice to know you got to – Receiver slash quarterback slash running back out there doing everything. Um, so he's, but he's he's more running back, but he's done a great job, man. I mean, if uh, if all of our kids can grow up to be like to carry on Joyner, we would have all done a good job. Justin, obviously, you've had a ton of guys that have played for you that have gone on to the NFL. But when you look at a guy like Juice, when he's making that decision of hey to come back or not or go pro or whatever that might be, I guess what's that kind of conversation like with him? What were kind of the, some of the things that you guys talked about as far as what might be pros, cons, whatever? And, and I guess how did that kind of go as far as you guys talking through that? Yeah, you know, it was a it was a long it was a long process. Um, you know, there's a lot of things. There's there's a lot of hard work that goes in just to get into the fall. Um, and you know, sometimes it can it can seem overwhelming for a kid, um, especially with, uh, you know, Juice's situation back home and having a chance to take care of, of some of his some of his family back home. I know that's really important to him, uh, and it should be. Um, so we, we talked about we talked about the pros and we talked about the cons. And, you know, Juice did a good job of, of seeking mentorship with his high school coach, with his family back home. Um, and uh, it was a lot of hard conversations. And there, was, there were times when I was like, man, he's, he's, he's probably not coming back, you know. Um, but we're all really glad he's back. He's he's such a good kid. You know, he's a, he's a really good football player, but he's an even better person, even better kid. Um, and I think he did a really good job of doing his homework and listening to the right people. And um, obviously, we're all really excited he's back. We were talking to Xavier the other day about just kind of the Gator Bowl and the impact that that had on him. Have you seen any kind of change in him since having that sort of breakout performance at the end of the year? Um, you know, uh, I don't know if it was necessarily the end of the year. You know, throughout the, the beginning of the year, he probably wasn't playing as much as, as he wanted to. And instead of pouting and, and sulking and, and letting it get him down, he worked even harder. And, you know, I think the Texas A&M game with the kickoff return really, you know, um, helped catapult the rest of his year. Um, and we were thin in that bowl game, and he had he had he had to play a lot of snaps. Um, but Xavier's going to work. You know, I don't. Uh, you know, I got Juice and Xavier, AB, all those guys. A lot of those guys in my room. I got to tell them whoa before I have to tell them go. So um, they do a good job of working hard. But I'm really I'm really proud of uh, the way he finished up the year, and uh, he's obviously done a, had a great off season, great winter, and uh, he's doing really good this spring. How have you seen some of those freshman receivers from last year, Kyle Cord and Lane? How do you see them continue to develop? 
Yeah, yeah, all of us are, the great thing about this is all of us are learning this offense at the same time, you know. Um, so they've done, they've done a really good job. They, they, they work extremely hard. They want to be coached hard. Um, they want to be good. Uh, obviously, there's this, the whole speed to the game at this level, and this, especially in this league. Uh, there's a lot of things that come with that. But they've done a good job of getting bigger, getting faster, getting stronger. And the next thing is just mastering this offense so you don't have to think. Um, and when you get out there and play, man, you just go play fast. How how's Eddie Lewis come along since uh, since y'all been able to get with him? Uh, he's done really good. Um, you know, I think he was a little bit in, in a little bit of a of a tempo offense and all that stuff when he was at Memphis. But he's done a really good job. Uh, works really hard. He can play multiple positions. Um, quiet. You know, you never really know what he's thinking. He doesn't really say much. Doesn't really talk much. But uh, he's an older guy that kind of leads by example. Um, and he's done a really good job. The thing I'm proud of with him and I'm proud of our guys is he's done a good job of getting in and meshing with the guys and. Um, you know, really being part of the group. It's, it kind of feels like he's been here for two years already. Uh, you mentioned Dowell's offense a second ago. What were your early impressions of that? What were conversations like with him? And how does his offense kind of jive with what you want from your receivers? Yeah, um, I, yeah I didn't – I never overlapped with Coach Loggins. I, I didn't really know him. I really didn't know him at all uh, other than speaking to him after the game when we played Arkansas. Um, a lot of those kids at Arkansas when it started coming out that he was coming here, um, a lot of those guys that I recruited there uh, were, hey, Coach, you're going to love this guy. A lot of guys in the profession that I think a lot of that Coach Loggins knows um, were hitting me saying, hey, man, this guy's – He's an awesome guy, first off, and he's a really good football coach. So, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited that he's here. Uh, I think, you know, the offense gives our guys a lot of opportunities uh, to push the ball down the field and to go make plays. And any receiver, you know, they'll, they'll do whatever you need them to do if they know that, the, you know, eventually they're going to get chances to go make plays down the field and, and make one-on-one -on -one catches and, and try to get it in the end zone. Yeah, staying with that, Justin Shane earlier in the week was talking about you know some of the conversations he's had with some of the players, but their feedback so far on the offense. I know you probably don't want to sh share too much about what the offense is looking like, mm -hmm. but what have some of those conversations been with your receivers in terms of some of the positive feedback that they've liked so far with the offense? Yeah, I think just, just kind of just what I said. I mean, like getting the ball to them in space. Um, you know, I, I think um, getting the ball, pushing the ball down the field, uh, giving them giving them chances to make deep catches. Um, you know these these guys receivers if they, if they if they know they got a chance to get the ball man they're going to do whatever they can but without the football if they know they're going to get rewarded um, and that's what Coach Lagos does you know if you block we block for the rock man if you block and you do your job and you're unselfish you're going to get chances to go make plays so if you come up here and you study and you put a lot of work in um, then we're obviously going to we're going to help you out make sure you get rewarded. Um, Justin, you obviously knew Trey before mm -hmm. he was here so I mean what has it been like seeing him kind of integrate? into this team and where do you see him making the biggest impact in the fall? Um, you know, probably uh, it, it is crazy to see him here. He was 17 years old. I mean, he played three, four games his freshman year. He played an SEC game against Ole Miss his freshman year. He was 17. That's what people don't realize. I mean, he was he graduated early. Um, he's a lot bigger than what he was when I had him. He's put on a lot of weight, but he looks, he, he looks really good. Um, you know, probably one of the biggest things with Trey is just his leadership. I mean, he's very, very smart, um, you know, and I, and I think just like a lot of these guys, they, they know this is kind of like the, the, the last go around and they want it to be their best. And he obviously came here for a reason, but he's done a good job of adapting to the culture that Coach Beamer has here. And, and he fits us. You know, he's a he's a great kid. He's got a good spirit about him. He's got a smile that lights up a room. And y'all know him. I mean, he can come in here and take this room over. Um, but it, it's a credit to his family. He's got great parents. He's got two great sisters. Um, so it's been really cool. It's been really cool to, to have him here. So he was, he and I had a really, really good relationship. I remember the first, when we were there at Arkansas, when he walked out of the building, when he came on his visit, like, there's no way we're getting that kid. And we ended up getting him. And, um, and he had two good years with me. And then Coach Loggins put weight on him. And, and now he's playing tight end. Just I know there's some, you got an older room at least for now, but some of those younger guys, whether it's Omega, Landon, whoever it might be, Kylie, I guess, have you kind of seen some of those guys come along when, you know, obviously you've got older guys that are probably going to play a lot of those snaps. I just, have you seen some of those guys take it to the off season and where they're at at least right now, sort of that younger group? Yeah, I, I think um, kind of one of the things building off uh, the question earlier is those guys in the bowl game saw how thin we got uh, and Omega had to play in the bowl game. Landon had to play a couple snaps in the bowl game. Um, you know, so I, I think they see the opportunity to help. 
Um, losing Jalen Brooks, losing Josh Van, um, you know, Corey Rucker leaving. I mean, that stuff that creates a lot of opportunity for a lot of young guys, um, something that they probably didn't think was going to happen when they were here in the fall. So uh, they've done a good job. I mean, Omega is up here every day studying. Uh, Landon's doing a good job of studying. Kali, all those guys, you know, um, uh, DJ Black, you know, those guys are work, working really, really hard to, to get in here and to, and to learn the system and, um, you know, really looking forward to the freshmen coming in in the summer too. Easy.